Hello, ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host, Desi, and welcome to my podcast, Strange Things. As we are getting into October, we'll be continuing our Based on True Stories. I'll be going around asking different people what their scary encounters were. How this works, it doesn't have to be from their own. It can be from someone else they heard it from or, or something they saw off of the internet. If you have any strange encounters, whether it's paranormal, dream, a simple mind, or eye trick, then please do share, and I'll include it into my podcast if you like. But for now, let's grab some snacks, drinks, and hope you found a comfy place to be in as we jump right into our today's episode. For today's episode on uh, strange things, I have with me McKenna from McKenna with an A, also from a Walk Back in History podcast. So tell me a little bit much more about your podcast. Um, so I start off with like a date. So my first episode was the 1960s. And I just, like, talk about that year and, like, talk about some cool things about it. What cool things, McKenna? Music, clothing, like, new stores opening, like, technology, basically everything. How things were in the past? Yeah. It's like a look back in history, which is pretty cool. Okay, and where can we find that? You can listen on Mondays at 7 a.m. on WJHS. Okay, all right. Or find it on YouTube at WJHS Studios. All right. All right. I like it. I like your podcast. Subscribe, please. Yeah, you heard or subscribe. <laughs> Better subscribe right now. Yep. Subscribing is really important. We've reached 1,000 subscribers. You should start your own channel, McKenna. That'd be pretty fun. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what you're here for? Um, I think so. Since I basically just explained it to you behind the scenes. Yep. Okay, so you already told me that you don't really have a strange encounter of your own. No, I do not. But you do have one that was from your sister. I do. Would you mind telling us what was it? So my sister, we just got home from dinner. And she was getting out of the car and we were in the driveway. And she saw this like shadowy figure and she's like, that's weird. But then I tried and looked because she tried to show me and I was like, I don't see anything. She's like, there was something there. So I was like, okay. Then that happened again, like a few months later. And I was like, this is weird. Was it like an old house? It was kind of an old house, I'd say. It's an older house. Yeah, that kind of, like, simulates with my, from when my brothers used to tell me. Okay, so, I don't remember the date, don't remember the year, because I have crap memory. But, um, there was one time where I was babysitting them, so it was just us three in that house. My mom and dad were, like, out for, like, work or something, but they were gone. So I fell asleep as a good babysitter would. So, and they, they woke me up, both of them did to tell me, like, hey, there's a shadow in Mom and Dad's room. We don't know who that belongs to. Oh. And I go, you better stop that right now. That would, especially if, like, you're home alone and, like, that'd just be creepy. Oh, yeah. Um, and that also reminds me of the time around Christmas. Some, some time ago. <laughs> I slept down in the living room. Now, all, the only light source I had was the Christmas tree. Oh. So I was, I was like, okay, this is already uncomfortable. And as I'm trying to, like, fall asleep, like, trying to, I hear something in the kitchen. Like, a little pop sound. Oh. Only to find out, you know how you, like, squeeze, like, an empty milk bottle and it mm-hmm. just, like, pops on its own? Yeah. That was that. Oh out of flat out of nowhere. I'm like, oh. So it was, like, settling, but you thought it was, like, something different? Yeah. Oh. It just had, it just had, it happened, like, right then and there. Yeah. That's okay, my mom and dad's room was, like, nearby. Yeah. I would have been, like, really scared. I would not know what to do. (laughs) Well, my other option was to hide under the, under the blanket or run into my mom and dad's room. Yeah. Because it was just right there. Yeah. I went to the haunted jail, and I was completely petrified the whole time. Really? What happened? Yeah. Well, they, like, chase you around. 
I get that, like, they're not allowed to touch you or anything, but they still, like, chase you around, and it's really dark, because, like, the only light you have is a glow stick. Oh. And it's just really creepy. Me and my brother started the haunted school one time. Yeah. We did not even make it through. Not Mm. even... (laughs) Okay. We didn't even make it through, okay? Oh, my gosh. All it took was my brother Kyler to... Because there was, like, this long, dark hallway. Like, Mm -hmm. completely pitch black. You cannot see the end. So, he's afraid of the dark. Mm -hmm. So, he's, like, tugging on me. Because we're, like, holding hands. Yeah. Just to find each other because it's completely dark. Yeah. And he's like, I cannot go. I can't do this. I'm afraid of the dark. Mm-hmm. It's like, they're not allowed to touch you. Okay, we read somewhere where they're not allowed to touch you. They're just going to jump out and scare you. That's mm-hmm. it. And he's like, I don't really want to do this. Trust me. I'm like, he's like on the verge of crying. Yeah. So it's like, okay, we'll turn right back. So we did, and we passed by the first jump scare guy. He's just like sitting there yeah. <laughs> on his phone. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty, just like waved high. <laughs> so we went by him very creepy and then um yeah that was that we didn't want to go back yeah i mean to be honest i i I felt pretty confident but then again that hallway reminded me of my grandma's oh my gosh dark pitch black oh my goodness i didn't i (laughs) i don't really blame him for being scared i would have been i would have been terrified yeah but yeah, I mean, it, it was my money that was wasted, so I don't really care. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, anything else you would like to say, McKenna? Um, keep on listening to Destiny's podcast. Thank you, McKenna. You're welcome. And it's don't forget to check out her podcast. Yep. A walk back in history. Yes, I'm so sorry. My brain no, is just okay. not functioning today. Yours is strange things? Mine okay. is Strange Things. Keep on listening to Strange Things. Right. It's and really if, cool. And if you have any, like, if you have any experience like McKenna and I, then please do share them. All right. It was good having you, McKenna. It was nice being here. For the next guest we have, Jaden, uh, quick question. Do you have a podcast? I don't have a podcast, but I have a radio show. Do tell. I, ha- I talk about community events and local events happening within the next month or few months just so that you get know what to do if you're bored and stuck at home, pretty much. Interesting. Anything uh, more about it, or is that just it? Pretty much. Just like local events, things that you can go and do if you have nothing to do. That's pretty much it. Okay, and what can we find your radio show? Um, 91.5, usually on Fridays at noon. At WJHS, I am the community event planner. You'll probably hear me at noon. All right. I'll let the audience know. So the uh, the reason why I brought you on here is because I wanted to ask you a question. The question is, do you have anything, like, scary that you encounter or did you hear it from someone? I have one scary story that happened to me in, like, sixth grade, actually. It was right after we decided to watch a horror movie. Would you like to hear about it? Yes. Definitely. Okay. So we watched The Ring for the first time, and we were tiny little sixth graders who were scared. Um, So we decided, as tiny little sixth graders who were scared at a female sleepover, that we wanted to go play Bloody Mary in the bathroom with our phone flashlights. While more of the story is what happened was after we did it like three times... Uh, one of the girls got pulled into the bathtub by nobody was standing behind her. She just got yanked in there, and you could see the handprints on the actual shower curtain. So we all screamed and ran out of the room, and we woke up her dad, and her dad was very not happy, but we were terrified. So he left, and later that night, there was knocking on. It wasn't just normal knocking. We were all sleeping in the living room at this point. It was loud banging on the door, very prominent like you could not mistake it and her dad wasn't home because he left because he had to work third shift so we were hiding under the covers not sure whether we should go look in the window and one of my friends finally threw me to go look in the window there was a white van outside and nobody we could see and then after a while it stopped and then something happened at the other window was the same thing so we hid in her closet until it was about six in the morning when we all passed out in her closet fun story just 
It went from that to just the white van. Yeah, it was very um, confusing times. We, I think we were mostly worked up about the fact that these events all happened in the same night, that we weren't thinking logically. Like, there could have been a logical explanation that it was somebody's friend or they thought it was somebody else's house or just none of it actually, it was all in our mind kind of game. But it did happen, I do recall. It's just, you know, how sixth graders are with stories. Well, I would love to continue this talk, but I have to go to my next class. We can continue this tomorrow if you'd like to come visit. Yeah, I'll definitely check out your radio show. It's great. I'm on the air, like, all the time. All right, see ya. All right, with our final guest we have... Mr. Glossa, how's it going? Oh, good. How's it going for you, Mr. Glossa? Doing well. We're talking spooky times, aren't we? Indeed. Okay, so the story that I want to share is this was 15 years ago. It is dark, dark. We are in the world-recognized dark city of Flagstaff, Arizona. It is a couple hours north of Phoenix in the mountains. And it's 7,000, 8,000 feet up. And my wife and I had went stargazing. They have an observatory there. It's, it's beautiful. It's a dark city. They legally require people to have their lights off at night for the observatory there. And so it is when it is nighttime out, it is dark. It is dark. The skies are beautiful. The, the stars are absolutely wonderful. So we went to go sky, uh, sky watching um, near one of the observatories. And it is pitch black out. And so you actually drive up the mountain. You drive up from 7,000, 8,000. I think it's like 10,000 feet up there. So the air is thin. And it's all wooded, all pine, very remote. And we're up on this mountaintop, and, and I have a pickup at the time. So we're actually in lawn chairs in the back of our pickup. There was a, 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 a cosmic event happening to that night. I think it was some, uh, they were expecting some shooting stars. And so we were watching for those, and, and Venus was out. And uh, that evening, we're, we're sitting in my, my pickup, just, you know, kind of chitting, chit-chatting back and forth. And we're in the woods, in the parking lot, and amazingly... It gets dead quiet. Just all of a sudden, no animals, no birds, no anything. Just absolutely. We stop talking, and it is silent. So it's black. It's silent. Just the the stars twinkling. And we both turn and look at each other, and we feel this presence, I guess you could say. And there had been rumors of weird animals getting seen before. You know, don't even consider the lore of... Uh, the Native American tribes that live in that area or the the beautifulness, the sacredness of the mountain. But needless to say, that moment, we both looked at each other and we didn't say anything. We just jumped out of the pickup, got in the the truck, and drove off out of there as fast as we could. We felt like we were being watched by something that wasn't human. Wow. So it's, it's pitch black. Just only the stars, right? Only the stars? Only the stars. Only the stars. And what, you know, opening the doors of the pickup, that was all the light that there was out there. Like I told many of my other guests on the show, well, two two of the guests I've had, um, the only thing that ever scared me was my grandma's hallway. And you know the reason why? Why's that? It's because her hallway was pitch black. They, like it was, it wasn't a long hallway. It was not that long. Now, the uh, the worst part about it was, you know what the light switch was at the end of the hallway, <laughs> meaning you have to go through complete darkness in order to go get it, just to go just to go to the bathroom, because that's also at the end of the hallway. What makes it even worse is because there's a room. It's like a storage room. This like right there at the beginning of the hallway. Now, the worst part about that was. The door didn't close. There was no light. So it was pitch black in there as well. So, But the good thing about it is my grandpa's bedroom was also at the end of the hallway. So I would always have to be, Grandpa, turn on the hallway light, please. <laughs> so he would have to get off of bed, turn on the hallway light so I can go use the bathroom. <laughs> he would wait for me to get out of the bathroom, then turn off the hallway when I got down to the hallway. I was like, love you, good night. That's a great, great story. End of the hallway. And then you have to shut it off to walk back. And you're in the dark again. 
Yeah, it always felt like there was something, like, right behind me whenever I try to be brave, turn on my flashlight, and then try to go use the bathroom. It always felt like that. Yes. Speaking of which, we, uh, me and my family go on many vacations. I don't remember, like, some of them, okay? Forgive me, but I do have, like, a short memory. Um, but we didn't go on this one, one vacation. I don't remember, so, I don't remember, uh, where we went to. But uh, we did get separated. Not, like, by ourselves, but we went with, like, a group. It was... So, separated means my mom was with my brother, Kyler. They were, like, trying to catch up. So, meaning they were, like, walking in the back, far back. And uh, it was just me, Dad, and my little brother, Jeremy, that was walking ahead. So, we had to stop and wait for them. And they, uh, they looked like they were about to run. Like, they came running running up to us, and they're like, hey, I think we need to get going. I'm like, why? Because my mom looked at me, and she's like, there was someone following us. Just someone in, like, this hooded, like, he had his hood down, couldn't see his face. He was, like, f- following us, me and Kyler. We need to go. Yep. My most favorite, vac- this is the last one. My most favorite, uh, my most favorite vacation memory was when in New Orleans. We didn't stay there for very long as we hoped so. So we just went there for like a day. And then we headed back to our car. And as we're like walking back, some dude in this car just like drives by us and yells, Get out! <laughs> <laughs> oh man, what'd you guys do? We, uh, we kind of were like, Well, good thing we're heading out of here. Because he just drove on by and just yelled that out to us and then just kept on going. Probably for the best then, yeah. It it was strange, but, uh, well, I mean, we're going back to our car anyhow. Creepy encounters. Yeah, when in doubt, I like my house, too. (laughs) It's good having you, Mr. Glaza. Thank you for having me on. See ya. For more Strange Things or other podcasts, check out WJHS Studios.